Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're going to be talking about hex, are we on track? If you like this kind of hex quantitative and technical hybrid analysis, leave a thumbs up. Be subscribed by the end of the video if you aren't already. And let's talk about whether hex is on track with what we expect to happen. So obviously, if you haven't been living under a rock, then you know we have been forming for the last almost month now on the hex chart, a very nice bull flag. And there, there have been different ways we've drawn this in the past, but now we're connecting uh, the bodies of our candles together and we get this very, very nice channel in which no candles have actually broken, right? If you look at, if you look at uh, this part over here, May 19th, May 20th, candles didn't break fully, ben or they didn't close fully beneath it, right? They broke for a bit. And then same with May 23rd and 24th. We broke beneath this level, but we haven't closed candles, full candles, full candle bodies beneath it. And we even wicked down to it here and a few times here. So we're in this channel and currently price is flirting with the top of the channel. This is a good sign. Generally speaking, the more times a level is tested, the more likely it is to break. And so if we get a horizontal ray here and place it on, excuse me, on the, the candle, the all-time high candle and get rid of this for a little bit you can see that we have been testing this level of 6.4 cents multiple times so the more times you test it again the more likely it is to break and after, once once that happens we'd want to see a retest but potentially a retest not always right uh these wick off retests sometimes happen sometimes you just get left behind and don't come back to test your prior levels so 6.4 cents is the level we're looking at Kind of interesting, it's around 10x, the previous uh, resistance zone. If you recall around the 600, 6.4, 6.5 region, kind of interesting. But um, yeah, we're, we're in a new paradigm, 10x above uh, our previous paradigm, which is really nice. And we are now waiting for this level of 6.4 cents to be hopefully not only broken, but held as support. Hex generally likes to do these textbook formations, so I wouldn't be surprised. We had a textbook break above, held it a support, and then it was blast off. Another chart I want to show you guys, this whole the whole video is really just are we on track? I'm going to show you a series of charts. And because things are kind of quiet right now, right? There's nothing necessarily new to show you, but there's plenty uh, to look back on to see, okay, where where's this model at right now? So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'll actually have something a little a little different. A lot. It is kind of new, so we do have something new for you here. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our dashboard. I wanted to check out here. First things first. Should have put these in order. Um, uh, our dashboard here shows us our daily volatility, and this is something I was debating whether showing it or not. But it's not that big of a deal to show you guys. I think I think you'd appreciate this, and that's this volatility index that I've described in the past. Simply being your intraday spread. It's simply your high minus your low divided by the average. So it's sort of a percentage um, percentage spread for that day in a way. And as you can tell, the spread has dipped beneath the 1% level. And we've only seen that a few times in the history of the hex price chart where we had one over here and this was indicative of low volatility before a 2x move up. Over here, between day 400 and 500, we had a few of them. First one being over here around the you know the 0 0.008 region, so beneath a penny before our subsequent move up to what is it like 7x, right? And we had a series of them which you could have you could have said you know I any of these were were a good time, where this one happened around the same level and then these were. You know, a little higher, but generally still good regions to buy. I believe just just above a penny. The good days, right? Just above a penny. Uh, but recently we had this wick down. All right, so we have this wick down on the volatility index, which means things are calming down. And this is a chart I like to pull up whenever I see things calming down in the chart. So whenever I I see us having a nice little consolidation pattern, usually that's a good time to pull this chart up to see are things quieting down. And to be real, there was a uh, Whenever I input the, the the data for any given day from Nomics, right? I have to manually update the the hex price on any given day on Nomics, and that updates all the models. Um, just just doing that, you're able to see the spread of the high and the low. 
So when I saw the spread be super small between the high and the low of the day, another trigger in my mind to pull up this chart. So with good reason, as you can tell, because we had a nice wick down. This is generally indicative of an explosive move incoming, the direction of which can be inferred via context clues. And after a big ass bull flag like this, low volatility, you know I'm a huge hex bull. You know I think this thing is gonna bust. You know I think this thing is gonna blow up. And um, yeah, again, not financial advice or generic disclaimer for this video, but this is how I'm arriving at my conclusions is with the data. Low volatility during a bull flag, things are looking good is all I can say, right? And again, we're testing the top of our channel. And so things things could pop any moment now for the, those of you guys in the comments who are asking, should I buy now? Is now a good time to buy? Um, maybe this is a video that helps you make that decision. Uh, okay, so something a little differently. Oh man, this hair's a mess. Something a little differently that I actually have never brought up here, but I was looking at it earlier today and thought it was kind of cool is this idea of Ethereum, right? And what we have plotted here is the Ethereum price starting from March of 2020 up until today with the 50 day simple moving average. And why did I plot that? Well, because we've only actually broken it a few times in the past, you know, year and a half or so. Obviously over here between, what is this date range? March 8th and April 16th before a move up, held it a support nicely, bounced off of it, and we had another break of it and a nice little reaccumulation consolidation. And you'll see why I'm, I'm breaking this up in a bit. I'm about 41 days from September 6th to October 16th. And then once again, um, yeah, you could consider this little area as well as, let's talk about this little area and then where we are now. Okay. So this first region where Ethereum price broke the 50 day moving average for a nice little reaccumulation capitulation zone, March 8th through April 16th. What was going on in the hex price? March 8th through April 16th. Right? I had it ready for you guys. And that was this, this region over here, this nice move up, retest of all time highs, move up, retest of this all time high for a nice 10x blast off. And from the actual bottom to this local top was about 50x, okay? And then we look at what happened over here between Mar or September 5th, 2020 and October 16th. On the hex price, that's over here. Again, nice bullish formation, ascending triangle before a nice almost 4x move up, nice blast off. And from the bottom to this local top was approximately a 7.5x move up. So these are, these are, these are nice moves, okay? And then over here, once we saw it for the last two times was between February 23rd and March 6th of 2021, which was over here, February 23rd, March 6th of 2021. Nice reaccumulation zone before a subsequent 7.5 X. So most of these moves have been explosive after Ethereum does this sort of reaccumulation. And then we see a nice, nice formation on, on hex, right? Whether it's a bullish formation or just reaccumulation and then it's blast off. And then this last one actually didn't plot between March 22nd of this year, March 29th. What is that? So this little region over here, right? So generally, uh, Ethereum likes to go beneath 50 day moving average, have nice little reaccumulation zones. And why am I bringing this up is because look at where we are now. Ethereum broke May 19th and we've, we're still under it. We're still hanging out under it. So May 19th, what was going on on the hex price? About approximately that. So it doesn't look too far fetched to think that this could be playing out similar to these other four data points. Again, this is only four data points, so nothing to really be 100% certain about, but I think it's interesting seeing this kind of play, this dance between the Ethereum price and the hex price where when Ethereum breaks beneath its 50 day moving average, we see nice patterns on hex, whether it's a bullish formation or reaccumulation and then the subsequent move up. And it could be a little different, right? Because who knows what Ethereum is gonna do this time around. Is it just gonna repeat and continue its move up? Hard to tell and hard to tell how exactly Hex will react to that given the pulse chain launch 
coming up and it's just hard to tell, right? But this is what the charts are saying. Take everything I say with a grain of salt, but use this data, interpret this data how you will, right? So that's that. I uh, thought it was really interesting because we've only had a few points in the past where Ethereum has broken the 50-day MA in the past year and a half. And then what happened to the hex price after was very bullish. So I wanted to point that out as well. This is the chart. This is one chart that I think is pretty special. And it is because instead of just plotting log on the vertical axis, this is actually a log chart on the vertical and the horizontal axis. So this is what's known as a log log chart. For some of those of you who are into maybe math, physics, engineering, you've seen log log charts. It sounds kind of funny, but it essentially takes the, ver or the horizontal axis of time and makes that logarithmic as well, where the spacing is the same, right? So 10x between day one and 10 is the same spacing on the screen as between day 10 and 100 and between 100 and 1000 because you're going by ratios as opposed to differences. And so this is what this looks like. It kind of uh, illustrates the the exponential shape of this this fit. And you can see, you just see it from a slightly different angle and we can actually, just because this is like less data, day one to 10, if we start at day 10, you can kind of get a clear clearer look at what's happening. Allow bounce to hide data. There you go. It's just a little a little different way of looking at things. And you see that price is on this model. Again, this model is speculative, but this model seems to converge to the dollar level nicely. Um, like, I, like I've said in previous videos, as soon as July of this year, but as late as day 856 or so, which is approximately, you know, 300 days away. Um, 10 months, what is that? Like April of next year. So as soon as July of this year, as late as April of next year. So that's quite the range, right? And then the middle would tell you, well, like the green, the, the midline would tell you, you know, six months from now, which puts us kind of at the end of the year. So potentially summer of this year, summer of next year, maybe even just end of this year would be the midpoint to hit a dollar if that is the goal. Uh, I think it's very, very possible. Go watch the path to a dollar video if you haven't already to show why I believe this can reach a dollar. And there are many arguments, right? That's not the only one, but that one's pretty fun and popular. And also, thanks for all the love on the Pulse Chain video yesterday. You guys crushed that one. You really like that content. So do my best to um, to do more of those. But let's go ahead and just take one more look at this with uh, starting at day 100 or so, just to kind of clear things up a bit and show you. Because when, when I saw this chart, it kind of, again, this is the, the good thing about looking at things from a different angle is that this kind of emphasized in my mind the importance of this yellow yellow curve. Uh, it seems to have held really nice support over here and then significance here as resistance and support, sort of like a consolidation region. We recently hit it, kind of held resistance. It seemed to be wanting to test it again uh, shortly, so that'll be interesting to watch. But um yeah, I think this is a really interesting chart. And yeah, just something new for you guys to look at. What else? The Hex BTC pair is absolutely uh, exploding. Uh, I found it really interesting how we've reached this level of 97 on the RSI in the past on this chart. And we haven't really ever touched it again since like May of last year. So there could still be room to move up, especially noticing how this RSI is starting to curve up nicely bounce back up. So could we be seeing a, a continued move up potentially because dynamics are different as we've talked about multiple times on this channel. Supply dynamics are different, no longer hyperinflation. We're breaking new all-time highs. So we are in price discovery mode on the Hex BTC pair. And we've seen in the past certain moves that in retrospect, you zoom out and market structure in retrospect just becomes a flat little region where things just go absolutely berserk, as we've seen on certain pairs like ETH BTC pair. Let's actually pull that up. I want to show you guys just how wild things can get against Bitcoin on a chart that's absolutely crushing it against Bitcoin. Right, so you have some market structure formation, and then once you break all-time highs, it's price discovery mode, 
and you saw, you know, this ETH BTC go how much higher above previous all time highs? Let's just get let's just get a fun idea. Right? So magnet tool, this all time high to this all time high, it's approximately a four point two X, right? A four point two X or so. So if something similar were to happen, let's say on the hex BTC pair, um, and this is just pure speculation, right? A single data point, but I think it's can be insightful to look at. So if we were to do what the three or a four point two x, that was around here, or so I believe. Yeah, around there. So then we could be looking at. Well, currently we're at like what 158 satoshis. Could be looking at you know 465 satoshis. So that's a nice 3x away, uh, given where price is now. It's like 18 cents, assuming Bitcoin stays stable, more or less. So yeah, yeah, that that'd be really interesting, <laughs> very interesting to watch play out. But just wanted to give you an idea that once you break uh, previous all-time highs on BTC pairings, just one example of really what can what can happen. Right, and there's just one example. Things can go absolutely berserk, especially if the design is is a good design, which I think Hex is designed beautifully. Right, so just kind of one last thing I wanted to touch on market and review style video once again is our exponential fit, right? Our regression rainbow, uh, Fibonacci spaced, right? Our Fibonacci spaced model because it's interesting how how kind of well, we've respected, especially the orange and the yellow curves on this Fibonacci space model, where once again, if we do have a fractal of over here playing out, remember I was saying we had a lot of consolidation between orange and yellow, a nice local peak to the green, then consolidation, yeah, consolidation around the yellow before blast off, and over here, major consolidation between one uh, band lower, between red and orange, local peak to the yellow, one band lower than the green, and then instead of consolidation around yellow before blast off, maybe consolidation around orange before blast off. And we've seen that recently. We've seen a nice move up, again, similar to here, could be a fractal, some nice consolidation around this band before potential move up. Even if we don't reach pink, we could be reaching purple perhaps, which is a nice, what is that? A nice uh, 6X away, <laughs> putting X at 36 cents. Um, and actually it would be a little higher because this extension would be from a level that's moving up. So it would be 36 plus cents. So we could be looking at 40 cents or higher. Flirting with that 10,000 X from the bottom that Hex was designed to do. So yeah, I find it really interesting how we seem to have respected this yellow super nicely as resistance here came back down beneath the orange back up above it. And now we seem to be holding it as support. So that'll be really cool to see if we were able to actually hold it as support and continue our move higher, this is on lookintohex.com. So definitely check out the site if you haven't already. Built from scratch, completely free, just a resource for the community. So you guys can check it out whenever. And obviously, um, obviously watch the videos, but if you want to be updated real time without having to wait for a new video drop on any given day, just check it out, lookintohex.com, and you can see all these graphs and more. So with that said, we also have a test of resistance on my channel analytics on the impressions. So around 17K Tuesday, June 1st, quickly approaching it today. So can we break past this resistance level on my analytics or will the hex price break first? Let me know in the comments below. Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this kind of hex quantitative technical hybrid analysis. Be subscribed most definitely by now. If you've been here for 20 minutes and you're not subscribed, how are you doing? Subscribe, turn on the bell. We turn on our turn on the bell for post notifications because we drop videos every single day. And once again, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.